Hello friends. This video will describe, what is ganglion cyst and its locations, epidemiology, pathogenesis, clinical features, diagnosis, differential diagnosis, and treatment. Before starting, I will request you to subscribe, share and hit the bell icon for more such videos. What is ganglion cyst? A ganglion cyst is a fluid-filled swelling overlying a joint or tendon sheath. Ganglion cysts are thought to arise from a herniation of dense connective tissue from tendon sheaths, ligaments, joint capsules, bursae, and menisci. They contain a mucinous, gelatinous fluid. The cysts can be unilocular or multilocular. Where ganglion cysts can occur? The most common location for ganglion cysts is the dorsal side of the wrist, in 70% cases. Most of the dorsal wrist ganglions can be traced by their stock as originating from the radiolunate ligament. The second most common location for ganglion cysts in the hand is the volar side of the wrist, in 20% cases, over the scapha trapezoid joint. Ganglions can also arise from the digital flexor tendon sheath which has classically been described as arising from the first annular pulley of the fingers. A small mass may be palpable in the flexion crease at the base of the finger. A digital mucus or mucinous cyst is a ganglion cyst that forms over the dorsal side of the distal interphalangeal joint. They occur most commonly in the 5th to 7th decades and are usually associated with an underlying diagnosis of osteoarthritis. Ganglion cysts can occur anywhere in the body and can also be found over the dorsum of the foot and may, less often, arise in the knee, shoulder, spine, or other intra-articular, extra-articular soft tissue, intraosseous, or periosteal locations. Epidemiology Ganglion cysts are the most common soft tissue tumors of the hand. They can occur at all ages, but are most common in the second to fourth decades with a slight female predominance. Pathogenesis The pathogenesis of ganglion cysts is unknown, but it has been suggested that they represent mucoid degeneration of periarticular structures. The role, if any, of repetitive movement in causation is uncertain, it may induce enlargement of the lesion and may provoke symptoms. Clinical features Ganglia may present as an obvious swelling on physical examination or may only be manifested by joint particularly wrist pain. The cyst is typically firm, smooth, rounded, rubbery, and at times tender. Patients may notice that the size of the cyst changes over time. Occasionally, the cyst can impinge and cause nerve compression, resulting in sensory and or motor loss. In addition, many patients seek medical attention for cosmetic reasons or out of concern for possible malignancy rather than due to any symptoms. Diagnosis The diagnostic approach depends upon the physical examination. Transillumination In patients with a readily palpable lesion, transillumination provides an easy in-office method for differentiating ganglia from solid tumors, ganglion cysts transilluminate while solid tumors do not. Ultrasonography If available, ultrasonography is useful in the diagnosis of ganglia. Most ganglia have well-defined margins, thick walls, and acoustic enhancement. A solid-appearing ganglion, although unusual, may mimic a benign neoplasm. Magnetic resonance imaging In patients with occult wrist pain, Magnetic resonance imaging MRI, can differentiate most ganglia from other types of masses. Surgical biopsy The combination of transillumination, ultrasonography, and MRI are generally sufficient to distinguish between a benign ganglion cyst and other potentially neoplastic soft tissue masses. However, the presence of certain clinical features such as rapid growth, pain at rest, functional impairment, and atypical location, e.g., proximal or distal to the wrist rather than overlying the wrist, 
should prompt consideration for a surgical biopsy. Differential Diagnosis The differential diagnosis of ganglion cysts of the wrist and hand includes conditions associated with nodular lesions of the hand, several of which are tenosynovial giant cell tumor, epidermoid cysts, lipoma, infectious tenosynovitis, rheumatoid nodules, tendinous xanthoma, tophus N, synovial sarcoma. Treatment Overall approach to treatment is generally to start with non-surgical interventions which consist of observation or needle aspiration, given the limited morbidity of the lesion and the potential for spontaneous resolution. Surgical therapy is generally reserved for patients who have persistent or recurrent symptoms in spite of initial conservative therapy. Observation Suggest reassurance and observation for patients who are asymptomatic or do not want any intervention. Over 50% of patients may experience spontaneous resolution of ganglion cysts and do not require intervention. A brace can be used temporarily based on clinical symptoms, but use should be limited to avoid muscle atrophy that can be associated with long-term immobilization. Systematic joint inactivity due to pain from a ganglion cyst is also not recommended for the same reason for prolonged bracing. In general, pain severe enough to significantly limit activity would be an indication for surgical intervention. Ganglion cyst aspiration For patients with bothersome symptoms, aspiration of the ganglion cyst is suggested. However, the patient should be informed that more than half of ganglion cysts treated with aspiration will recur within approximately one year. In the case of volar cysts, caution is needed in order not to damage neurovascular structures, particularly the radial artery and the palmar cutaneous branch of the median nerve. Other adjunctive techniques Adjunctive techniques such as performing multiple punctures of the ganglion walls or immobilization after aspiration have not shown added benefit. Injection of ganglion cysts with glucocorticoids. There is no added benefit, and there is a potentially increased risk of subcutaneous fat atrophy and skin depigmentation. Injection of hyaluronidase. Success rates with the injection of hyaluronidase into the ganglion are highly variable and there are insufficient data to recommend its use. Surgical therapy. Surgical treatment is suggested for patients with persistent or recurrent symptoms despite initial treatment with conservative therapy. Surgical removal of the ganglion cyst entails either open or arthroscopic excision of the cyst along with its stalk. Surgery is generally quite effective, however, if not properly removed, the ganglion may recur postoperatively. Approximately 10% recur with either standard or arthroscopic surgery. Potential complications from surgery include infection, decreased range of motion, tendon injury, neurovascular injury, and an unsightly scar. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe.